All right, good morning. This is the September 9th meeting of the City of Binghamton uh, Traffic Board. Uh, first uh, item on the agenda is approval of the minutes uh, from the August meeting. Do you have a motion? motion? Ron Lake makes a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you, Brian, seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Now on to the uh, Business at hand, uh, 241 Robinson Street. This was something that came up at a previous meeting that we got some additional information and I think traffic board has to take a look at. Yeah, the traffic board actually went up to that location to review it. Uh, the new curb cut has been put in where the old uh, curb cut was, or where the uh, cutout was. And uh, uh, reviewing everything, it appears that there was a gentleman's agreement made between I don't know if the previous owner of the property at 239 and the owner of 241 about making that a, uh, a shared driveway or not. But uh, there is an existing driveway at 241 Robertson Street uh, on the east side of the, of the residence there. Uh, and it appears that uh, checking with planning and checking with uh, the engineer's office, uh, they all agree that it appears that uh, that's sufficient for the, that location. And uh, I didn't write anything up on it uh, because we weren't going to make any changes other than uh, just to deny the request. I think. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so essentially um, when we had the gentleman at a previous meeting, he represented that this was not going to increase the number of driveways in the property, but that he simply wanted to shift the driveway from one side of his house to the other. Uh, as it turns out, the driveway that's currently in use is not one that he has ownership of. It's a shared driveway that's used by the other property. And in fact, I think if you look at the property line, it's more so on the neighbor's property than his. So he was offering to the city a part of his plan that he did not have authorization to do. That's correct. So um, I would uh, essentially entertain a motion uh, based to be, you know reverse the prior approval for a curb cut access at 241 Robinson Street um, as previously approved uh, by the traffic board. Do we have a motion? Make a motion. Steve Bryan, second. Second. Okay, I'd like seconds, all in favor? Aye. Okay, that is approved. All right, Lockwood Street traffic review. This came in from a constituent on tractor trailer access. Yeah, three Lockwood Street, uh, the Miller family. Uh, they were complaining that the tractor trailers were coming down Lockwood Street uh, westbound and uh, uh, they were trying to make a right hand turn on to um, the side street there, uh, 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 Westview Terrace. And uh, in doing so, they're cutting across uh, the Miller's property there, digging up their yard. And uh, so the Millers uh, were requesting that uh, the traffic uh, trailers uh, not be allowed to come down that street. Traffic did respond to that location. And we met with the Millers and uh, reviewed the area. Uh, and uh, previously, we did uh, take some parking away from the north, uh, south side of the street where the DPW, where the garbage truck are making the, uh, a turn coming around the corner. But other than that, uh, uh, where the track trailers are going, it, the street is not wide enough to handle it. And uh, uh, and when they come down Westview Terrace and then come back up Green Street uh, to go out around the other way, that's a narrow street too. So in reviewing the entire area, uh, we suggest that maybe the entire loop there uh, which are all narrow one block streets, uh, Blackwood, uh, Westview, and Green all be posted as a no, no, uh, I'm sorry, five ton weight limit uh, for you know, track trailers. There is a uh, traffic code section 18.1 has to be uh, addressed. question is there a particular business they're making those deliveries to those local deliveries yes on shenango street uh apparently i i don't know which business i think it's that new one that opened up there a couple years ago um and 
for them to get their merchandise and stuff in, uh, I think we're going to, have to revisit that location. But it looks like on Shenango Street, if they go north of their location, there's a big no parking zone there. They may have to walk a few feet further, but I think that that should handle the situation. Dan, if you could just read off the, those streets off of Shenango again. Yeah, so, so we know. And yep. So the traffic division uh, is going to recommend that the uh, section 18.1 trucks over by ton be excluded uh, Lockwood Street from Shenango to Westview Terrace, Westview Terrace from Lockwood Street to Green Street, then Green Street from Shenango Street to Westview Terrace. I'll be posted as a by ton wait limits. Okay. Do we have any other questions? Do we have a motion? Motion. Ron, do we have a second? Second. Brian, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, approved. Mark Donovan is not here, uh, but do we got the info for St. John and Leroy? Yeah. Um, myself uh, and uh, the traffic division, we uh, drove to the area and reviewed it. And uh, basically, uh, Leroy Street uh, between Chestnut and uh, St. John Ave is a one block, two way east uh, west traffic pattern. It's run by several small businesses, and the adjacent intersections are controlled by a synchronized traffic lights with, with sufficient line of sights. Um, the request is to uh, the 50 foot cutbacks on the north and south side of the street from St. John going westbound uh, be reduced down to 30 foot cutbacks. Uh, and in doing so, give an additional parking on that street. Um, with what we observed, it appears that the street should be able to handle that. There's no problem with that at all. The additional part of it is uh, the, the beef restaurant uh, received a, an additional request from uh, Kevin Grace for that location. And we put an additional, uh, we put a uh, handicap parking space in there. And so um, uh, we did measure that out for a, a no parking. Uh, Handicap parking only parking space at the, on the north side of uh, Leroy Street uh, from 30 feet west of St. John Ave to 52 feet west. And we're going to amend the traffic code to uh, the 15 minute parking uh, on the south side of uh, Leroy Street from Chestnut Street to St. John Ave to be cut back from 50 feet to 30 feet. And then on the north side of the street, uh, the 50 foot cut back uh, from St. John Ave to 30 feet east of Chestnut Street, which is from 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Be cut back to 30 feet. Okay. So yielding two additional spots, one, you know, one on each one side of the street and yes. one of those being a handicap yep. uh, spot. Okay. And this was at the request of. Uh, uh, this is at the request of the Binghamton Realty Partners at 65 Leroy Street. Yep. Uh, which fronts that location and then also uh, the, the beef restaurant. Okay. Do we have any questions? All right. Do we have a motion to approve uh, changes uh, on Leroy Street at St. John Avenue as presented? Motion. Ron makes a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Chief Ryan, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. So, yeah, on that one, we'll just make sure we get with the DPW yep. on, on that. And uh, get that in before it starts snowing in about three weeks, right? Yep. Okay. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Cindy, uh, BMTS. Um, we've set the date for the road safety audit for North Street. It's on Tuesday, September 28th, okay. from 1.30 to 3. And I think uh, Lee McCullen sent out invitations to everybody and notices. So. Okay. Well, Very good. That. So that'll be on the October. Yep. We'll just hold that for the October. I will try to do this. And uh, yeah, same thing. Traffic will be there, right? Okay. For Allendale Road, um, this one is a follow up to a follow up to a follow up. To a follow -up. <laughs> um, so essentially, uh, we've granted a, a handicapped parking space at Fort Allendale Road. Following some other comments from neighbors, we had a gentleman that attended one of our meetings and some further review. Um, Dan, I'll kind of kick it to you, but we've developed other information about the 
uh, yes, operation of parking kind of in that area. Yeah. Uh, Dan, can you hand me another agenda? Um, we received a written uh, notice, a request from, one second, let me check his name right because I had it wrong the first time. I don't want to do it again. Um, Perico, Perico, I thought it was Greco originally, but it's Perico. Um, and uh, so we did respond to him, call him up and talk to him on the phone. Uh, very uh, arrogant uh, uh, in this response, but uh, basically what he was complaining about, it sounds more like a neighborhood dispute type thing. The fellow that lives upstairs at Poor Allendale Road, uh, his sister owns the building. And uh, this uh, Mr. Caricchio uh, likes to park his truck in front of the house. He owns a business and he, uh, he has tools and stuff in the vehicle. He likes to be able to observe it. And he says with the uh, handicapped parking spot being in front of the house, he can't see his vehicle. Uh, this fellow upstairs, uh, Mr. Uh, Giblin, uh, is handicapped. Uh, However, Mr. Giblin does have a two-car garage in the back of the house. He has two vehicles, one with a handicapped plate and one with a handicapped placard. Uh, his entrance to the house is from the rear of the house, so he doesn't uh, need to go to the front of the house to get into the vehicle. He gets in the, in the back of the house. It's a, it's a mixed review in my mind of, of what should be done. But I mean, leaning more and more that probably the handicapped parking should be removed and the parking should be uh, uh, returned to the street as a, as a anybody can park there. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't. Uh, Nate, I think that uh, you have anything else that you picked up on it that we should offer. No, I think that covers it. So I, I, think it, I think the key point it hit on is that we received you know, dozens and dozens of requests every year mm -hmm. for um, handicap on street handicap spots mm -hmm. in front of folks' house homes, and we routinely deny many of them because we have a very strict standard of of what it takes to get one of those. No access to off street parking. No verify the handicap tag. That type of thing. And and we've done a good job at whether it's with handicap on street parking or stop signs to really try to take a policy focused measured consistent uh, approach to it and i think that in the new information that's been provided to the city or found out by the traffic division i don't know if this uh this handicap spot would meet that standard based on now what we've, we've learned especially with the access to the house being in the rear meaning that the existence of the handicap spot in front of the home is really not aiding in in anyone's uh, travel it, in fact it's further away than parking that's that's currently available off street. Right, that's accessible. Okay. Uh, the other thing is, and uh, it is a shared driveway, and I think that that's where we've got to be a little bit more sympathetic that we're told that uh, between the two houses that, uh, uh, you know, cars sometimes block the driveway that he can't get in and out of his driveway uh, to get to the back of the house. And uh, I don't know if, a, if it was just an oversight by me or if uh, I, uh, misinterpreted what was said to me but uh, originally i thought it was a two two car garages in the back of each house uh, and it actually at uh, number six um Al allendale it's a one car uh, garage so that's one less car that's used in the driveway and every time we check the area uh, that the driveway is never being blocked so uh, i think the argument that the driveway is being blocked is no, I, I think that uh, I don't think that that's you know that complaint that part of the complaint is, is factual. I think that that's because if the two cars that are being used on Allendale from number four are Mr. Gibbons' vehicle, he's not blocked in his own driveway, and the one car next door, uh, you know, always appears to be on his own property every time we go by. I think that that. Uh, I think it doesn't justify having a handicapped parking space in front of the house. Uh, 
Um, the, the, one, the one issue that really bothers me the most, I think, and that maybe it uh, shouldn't, shouldn't really enter the picture, but uh, uh, Mr. Caricchio downstairs says that he's not going to pay attention to the handicap parking, whoever puts it up there. And uh, uh, I drove by a couple of different times on my own personal vehicle. And I saw that he was actually parking in the handicap parking zone. Um, and we also did have two incidents uh, where the handicap parking signs were taken. Now, I don't know if it's him or not. Uh, no. But uh, again, like I say, I don't know if she entered the picture or not. But uh, yeah. the, the need for the handicap parking, I, I don't think it's there. Okay. Yeah, those, those are probably separate issues that we can address uh, through other means. Well, but uh, what, what is this handicap? This handicap is, I don't know if we should discuss that publicly either, but yeah. all we know is that he is, he has a tag that's been approved but by just, a doctor. I'm not. I was just wondering whether it was a, a wheelchair or something. I could no, there's, it's not a wheelchair. I, I can, I can attest to that. Yeah. I observed him. Any other thoughts or comments on this? All right, so essentially, if, if the board would like, it would be um, a motion to uh, remove the handicapped parking zone uh, in front of Fort Allendale Road, uh, which was previously approved at a, at a former traffic board meeting. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. Do we have a motion for that? I'll make a motion. Okay, Mark Donovan makes a motion. Second. Ron Lake seconds. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Motion passes. And, and just to follow up on that real quick, uh, I'll make contact with Mr. Uh, Giblin. Let know that uh, that we are going to remove it. Yep. If, uh, so he does have first hand knowledge. That's correct. And you know, obviously, it's going to be a, probably a matter of a few weeks, um, as it still is. I think we have, you know, should actually wait 30 days prior to enacting any of these things with traffic board. Uh, usually I know it sometimes happens on a quicker basis than that, but uh, let's uh, discuss that. And then also if there are, you know, before it's being removed, there are vehicles parking there illegally that those be enforced as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, City Hall here, uh, 38 Holly Street. This is the handicap uh, ramp and access issue with the right of way and everything. I don't think do we have any traffic updates right around. No. We're just working on that. And I don't know even if this is a traffic board agenda item. This is more of an engineering uh, discussion. I, I think you're looking at. I yeah. So. Yeah. yeah I, I think the traffic board part of it is that the handicapped parking spaces themselves, the accessibility, uh, are we going to have to move them or are we going to uh, you know, make the diagonal parking or, or what, are, what are we going to do? Yeah. And I think that's the only reason that we left it on the agenda. I think, you know, that again, that's been worked out through engineering. So I'm trying to figure it out. Is the yeah. So we will, when it comes time, if we do have to make any traffic code changes, we, yeah. we will. But uh, yeah. we've been out and looked at just yeah. talking yep. to on the side. Mm -hmm. Not too specific. Okay. So I think we can remove it from the agenda as of right now, but with anticipation, maybe next couple of it may come back. If we have actual code changes to do. Uh, the State Street Deco District, uh, they've sent in, our consultants have sent in the plans. So um, I, I have not had a chance to review all of them. Um, it's quite lengthy, but they're also um, have uh, sent us, I think, changes to the traffic code or parking. That's what we were waiting for before we went out and looked at that. So if you could forward that one more we'll time. We will forward that along to the BMTS and everyone. So may request a special meeting some point later in September, just when we do deco and, and can kind of go block. By block. Um, but uh, we're, uh, we've got that now and uh, can, can go forward with that. We can leave that on the agenda. And uh, Livingston Street, uh, MTS and traffic, Gar, yeah, they headed know. there. Jim Abrams, the interim principal, reached out to me, so I contacted him, and 
we decided the end of the month was probably the best time after school sort of settled in. He hasn't gotten back to me on an actual date to go out there and meet with him. Okay. The idea would be to go out like in the morning or uh, during pickup one or the other to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other uh, items today? Yeah, uh, 1207 Vestalay have uh, uh, received an, uh, a request from uh, Sharon Elliott, who owns the building at 1207 Vestalay. Um, we're going to probably put this on hold, but basically what it is is that the 1209 Vestalay, the parking uh, lot next door to that location, currently was part of the 1207 Vestalay property at one time. And I guess that they deeded it over to the city of Eastman, East, Eastman I guess, mm -hmm. part of this. Uh, you know, she, what they're looking for is they're concerned that the, with the bank now being in the, the plaza there, that people are going to start parking in those parking spaces where it should be uh, reserved for the residents of 1207 West Lab. There are signs up there right now that say uh, resident parking only with arrows on. Our problem is, is that the enforcement, it's, I don't think it's going to be a city enforcement. Uh, I, I went up to corporation council. First of all, I checked with the engineer's office and uh, Juan Linsky. And then uh, from there, I went up to corporation council. I talked to uh, Brian up there, but he was not up to date on everything up there. He suggested I talk to Ken. Well, Ken's, I guess, on a three-week uh, three vacation. So I couldn't follow up with him on it, but uh, uh, if somebody does park in there illegally, we can't take them because we had no section for resident parking only. Uh, we can't tow them uh, from that location because it's, uh, you tow them from, even though it's a city property, it's, it, you have no section that covers it. Uh, so this is city property in which the owner of 1207 Vessel Ave has an easement over. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. In my in my opinion, it would be up to them to if they have an easement or they have use of this mm -hmm. section of property. It's similar to if the, if they owned it, although it's not. You know, they don't have actual property yeah. rights. But if they're allowed to park there, and I think we should inform them that if there are non-tenants parking there, then they um, they enforce. They, okay. they tow just like it would if it was a a private parking lot. Okay. Well, they want to know if the city would put the signage up, and I don't think we can. I, well, I think I think right now we did the signage up there that's a resident of parking only with a couple of arrows that's pointing yeah. towards each other. But uh, as far as you know, but there are signs up, correct? There are there are two signs that one okay. each other the, the area with arrows pointing residents only. Yeah. But again, her concern is with the bank opening up that people are going to probably park it close to the bank. There's going to be a lot of parking yeah. on site yeah. for the uh, yeah. development. So I, I'm, you know, aside from the signs, again, I think it should be sufficient. And if it's a problem, we can revisit it. But if they have an easement on city property, then they're in control of the city property, and okay. we wouldn't do enforcement. Uh, so they I, would. So that's what I can tell her that mm -hmm. uh, she can have, have the vehicle towed herself. That's correct. Anything else? Yep. Uh, 121 Fairview Ave. Daniel Grassi and Anthony Mazza sent in a traffic board application. Uh, apparently on uh, Fairview Ave, where the, uh, between Merrick and Clapham Street, where the uh, alcohol recovery section is. Uh, Mr. Uh, Grassi is concerned about people hanging out around there after, after hours. Uh, and he wants to know if uh, we can uh, delete the parking, uh, overnight parking in that area there. I talked to Heather Horner from that location. Uh, she's the clinical director up there. Apparently there's a outhouse or uh, it's probably the wrong terminology. Out, outpatient? Outpatient house. <clears throat> and uh, where they have like six, six uh, residents living and uh, they do walk at nighttime and they are at, from that location there. And it has nothing to do with the parking location. Uh, sometimes they may get, it, get somebody to pick them up or something, take them somewhere you know, after hours. But uh, uh, I, 
try to get back with Mr. Uh, Mr. Grassy, but uh, twice I got uh, just answer machines. And I, I don't leave a number because I don't want to leave my phone personal number. Mm -hmm. And uh, traffic, I'm not traffic all the time. So uh, I just try to make contact with them to discuss further at what, what he's looking for. So it's like that holds until such time that maybe. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I'm not even sure if it, we don't, we don't have any special no overnight parking anywhere else in the city. Well, we, we do have uh, no parking zones. Uh, yeah, I, I guess we don't really, we're overnight parking. Uh, yeah. For uh, daytime parking, you have parking. Sure. sure. We can, uh, we can wait and see if he follows up with you. Okay. And the only other thing we'd, uh, we got was, uh, mm -hmm. I have, this just came in yesterday, so we haven't had a chance. Uh, I don't know if we're going to put it on the agenda for next uh, month and a half, but traffic board application for Mikino, uh, for 145 River Tide Drive. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, he either over part of his property to uh, the attendance office next door. He wants to uh, put a, he has a shared driveway, so again, a shared driveway uh, with, the, uh, with the dental office. There. He wants to put a, his own private driveway there. So he deed over part of his property to the dentist's office. He has a separation of property uh, driveway entrances so that he could have his own private entrance because he's the rest of the house. We're getting in and out of the driveway because people coming from the, to and from the dentist's office sometimes obstruct his access. But again, we just got it yesterday and have had a chance to follow yeah. up on it. What we can do is we can uh, put it on the uh, the October agenda. I'm not sure if anything is required from planning and zoning prior to taking action on this. We can do that. That's all I have. Anything else? We got a call from our favorite lady from 151 Pennsylvania Avenue Street. She wanted a sign that says no Jake brakes to be used on this section of the road. Told that we couldn't do that without her going to traffic force. She says, Oh, you're not going to help me. Let's just go to traffic force. You may be on the line here. So. But I'm just letting you know that we're not, we addressed it. There's a pothole issue up there. I got guys going up to take a look at the pothole to see if that'll help out as well. So we're going to take care of that okay. as well. But I just want to let you know that might be coming up. Okay. Anything else? We have a motion to adjourn. A second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.